Hey, welcome to Storytellers in Mallorca. We have with us today Glenis German, and she's going to be sharing her story about why she came to Mallorca in the first place, some of the, the, the trials and challenges she's had, and what she loves about the place. So, hey, <laughs> listen, uh, welcome. How long have we got? <laughs> what I love about the place. Well, we'll be here till next week. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How long have you been here now? 32 years. Oh, my God. In Sut. No, October, 32 okay. years, yeah. Yep. 25 years in Bini Salem in September and 32 years on the island in October. Wow, yeah. wow. Um, so you've seen some changes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Don't get me started. Keep me on the positive. <laughs> okay, because <laughs> if I get off on a rant, yes, I'll yes. be ranting. Okay. Yeah, I have. I came when Mallorca was... Well, Mallorca, I always say to people, I live in paradise. Yes, yes, So, yes. you know, I'm in paradise, and um, that's where I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it is a paradise here. Um, living here for that length of time, there's so many, so many stories to tell. But what made you come here in the first place? Why did you decide on Mallorca? I didn't. Mallorca called me. Oh, Yeah, okay. it was great. No, I don't think... I don't think I've made any decision in my life. I've just allowed life to take me. Yeah. And luckily, life loves me. So life has taken me to some great places. But there's not many decisions I've made. They've sort of come into my path. I'm, I, I'm, I suppose coming from a hippie family, I've <laughs> kind of gone with the flow a lot. Yeah. But how did I end up in Mallorca is better, the question. Yes. Because... The best summer of my life was 1992 when I was working on a, a super yacht, all of 24 metres length of it. <laughs> Which is now, big in those you, days. In those days it was big. Nowadays yeah. it's a tin bot, yeah. it's a dinghy. Yeah. Um, so I had the best summer of my life. I was up in, in um, Sanremo in Italy um, and that as well. I didn't choose to go and work in the yachting industry. Certainly wouldn't have chosen that. And um, But I got asked if I could do two weeks in the summer because I had my degree in Spanish right. and I was living in Wales at the time. And um, I remember speaking with the agent who said, well, you might as well do the season because literally I was signing up for two weeks holiday in the August to speak Spanish to some charter guests that were coming for their charter in right. August. So it's, um, it's Easter to October. I'm like, well, I'm, I'm here in Wales. I could be in Italy on a yacht. Oh, I'll be in Italy on a yacht. So I went. I had the best summer. I hated working on the yacht. It <laughs> it cured me of liking a clean house. Yeah. I've just gone back to liking a clean house. But honestly, after that experience, oh, I never cleaned again. And in actual fact, I've got a cleaner now. I don't clean the scale. <laughs> um, but I made some great girlfriends, and we just had the summer of our life. And we came to New York on a charter right and it was the final charter of the season and we all knew the job was coming to an end in the um october so we came to mallorca we went all around mallorca we got held up in soyer in the port on the way back because of bad weather so we couldn't leave for three days so we spent all our money in lingerie shops in, <laughs> in the town we discovered a really nice shop and um so all the friends i'd made were saying oh, we're going to go across the Caribbean, we're going to do a crossing, we're going to do the season in the Caribbean. And I was like, no way. <laughs> Plus, I already crossed the Caribbean, the Atlantic, at five years of age on a right. banana boat. I didn't need to do it again. Yeah, yeah. You know, so I'm like, adios. But what am I going to do? Oh, well, it made sense to come back to Mallorca because they were all going to be, if they couldn't find a boat in Antibes yes. then they were coming to Palma yeah. so I was like I'm on log for the ride yeah. met my ex here we had our two boys here and it's kind of never left you know even when I thought I would be the one to care for our parents and I was really ready and prepared to be that daughter um, I even thought I'd go back to the UK which is where my parents ended up Luckily, that didn't happen, no, no, <laughs> and I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. So, Mallorca chose me. Mallorca let me in and said, oh, "Okay, you can come." And mm. yeah, but I have to tell the story of Bini Salem because we've been living eight years in Palma. Right. I thought I was integrated. I thought I knew what I needed to know, and um, I was working for Palma Pictures at the time, who we just built a brand new complex in Marachi. Right. So. 
it's time to consider moving out of Palma to be closer to work because we both worked there. And we were looking at the other side. So we sort of were prepared to look from Malga either, mm-hmm. Santa Maria Conce, you know, up as far as Buñola. So we'd go exploring. And, um, yeah, some of them were interesting. But the day I went to Bini Salem, because I thought, you know, better check out schools. So I parked my car, you know, opened the door. And I hadn't even got my foot onto Bini Salem when I hear Bondia, and that was it. I was sold. It was old, yeah. And I haven't <laughs> left Bini Salem since. I yeah. sometimes think maybe I should move to Costich or Senseas, which is where I've got friends, you know, maybe or Sapobla, which the market is great. You know, but then I'm I'm there. So Bini Salem, which means children of peace. Ah. And it's it's my peace. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, well, that, that's very fitting for, for yeah, you and for, everything for you all do. Work I yeah, do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, you know, staying around Bini Salem, Bini Salem uh, you didn't want to move closer to the, the sea in any way? No. You'd had enough no, after that? No, no, it wasn't that. Or... I'd been to see this clairvoyant. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> she was French. I wish I remembered her name. But so growing up, I always used to have horrible nightmares of tsunamis, right? Right. And, but the, the worst thing about the, the nightmare was I would be stuck against either a cliff or a building and I could see the tsunami coming towards me. So that's a past story. Right. So I go to see a clairvoyant in Palma, and she says, no, 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 you cannot live near the sea. <laughs> <laughs> I took her at her word, and I've been living in Vinny Salem ever since, right. which cracks me up because I'm looking out at the view of the sea and thinking, God, I could be looking at the sea as well, but no. Yeah. Do you know what? When you're in the middle of the island, mm knowing that you can get to the beach easily yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> doesn't make any difference to yeah. me. No, it really doesn't. No, no, yeah. no. The beaches aren't that far yeah. away, really. So. No, and no. also I was born on an island and I was also born in the middle of that island. So right, I think right. that's where I'm meant to be, yes, in the yeah. middle. And I'm the middle child, so right. maybe it's a whole ancestry thing. Yes, <laughs> yeah, for sure. And work-wise, did you have trouble finding work? No, no. I did never ever ever had trouble finding work because mm. I have a degree in Spanish, so my Spanish is excellent. I have skills and I have I've always had proper jobs with contracts and I've always had excellent um, terms and conditions. Mm-hmm. And now I'm a freelancer which we call a self-employed autonomo mm-hmm. paying my wonderful stamp every month plus my quarterly payments plus my wonderful gestor who allows me to to have an income and make an income and doesn't get me into trouble so right. I pay my taxes I'm very happy that my taxes are going to some good things yes, not, yes. I don't want to find out if they're going to arm people but yeah. no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> for education for health service and for my pension I hope I get one yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so no, I had um, skills. So I've had really great jobs on the island. I've mm. had, um, I've worked for some wonderful companies, and um, you know, I've met wonderful people along the way. And I'm happy to be self-employed, yeah. and um, you know, tick yes. great place, tick great jobs, tick great people. I mean, there's just so many ticks. Sure. About, but then I would be ticking wherever I would be living. Right. Yes, so yes, here yes. I am in New York. I'm going to make it work. Yeah. Sometimes I think, well, maybe I should go somewhere else. I've been here forever because I've been here more than I have been in my country of birth. Right. And then the next country and the next country. Yes, this is yes, the place yes. I've spent the longest. Yeah, so, yeah, 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 but yeah. I'm here. Yeah. I mean, it's having all this activity and all these good times the people around you here, but you must have had some challenges, some struggles, some things that you, or did you just overcome them with your natural... I'm very positive. I'm a pick myself up and brush myself off. Um, Also, I think one thing that has benefited me throughout my life is the fact that I was born foreign. Right. So if I stay here, I'll die foreign. What does that mean to me? It means that I've not had to fixate on... Um, an identity, nationality. People always say to me, but don't you want to get Spanish nationality? And I'm like, man, 
you know, I could have Jamaican nationality, I've got British nationality, it's just another load of paperwork. Yeah. <laughs> I might actually go for the Spanish because, of course, I'm having the realisation of what Brexit means. So, um, you know, so so being here, I've, I've, and wherever I've been before here, I've been the outsider and I've been really happy about being an mm. outsider, mm. but I'm also integrated outsider. Mm. But I love the fact that I can just go into my house and close the door. Right, yes. <laughs> Don't have yeah. any ties. Yes. Because when I was back visiting my dad's birth town, which my dad left to go to university and never went back to his mm-hmm. birth town, and I was there in February, and I appreciated that my dad left there because I always yearned for this place wow. and I found it in Bini Salem to a certain extent yeah. and I kind of hoped for it for my children but only from my own point of view which yes. was it was something I'd never had yes. but I'm really glad that they haven't got it either because it's a bit of a, a weight to be part of this community that's quite set in their ways mm. and it's mm. You know, so going back to my dad's birth town and seeing all of the cousins and some of the remaining aunts and uncles, um, I kind of looking at Binny Salem with those eyes and thinking, I'm so blessed yes. that yes. I am in the space that I've created for myself because I know that we don't know. Mm. I mean, I'm sure in Syria some years ago, they never expected that they would literally have to leave with the, the yes. clothes on their yes. back. Yeah. You know, sometimes yeah. you just don't know. So I'm not I'm not going to fixate myself with some set-in-stone idea. Mm. And also for my two sons, one's in Barcelona, one's in Bini Salem, I feel very blessed that he yeah. hasn't asked to go surfing in Australia, which I'm sure is around the corner, you know. But at the same time, I wouldn't hold them back because my yeah. parents never held me back. No. No. And I was here and they were in the UK. Yeah. My mum's, uh, their parents never held them back. Yes. And they both left from where, from whence they came. Yes, yes. Yeah, you know, yeah, so yeah. Mallorca's the place now. The challenges, the challenges are challenges that my beautiful Mallorca is facing, mm. which is, is an unsustainable um, way of living. Mm. I don't know about the rest of the world. I went to Jamaica last year. I was shocked and horrified. And it brought some pain to that Jamaican side of me. But politicians and and decision makers the world over, Mm. what are you doing? Um, Consumers the world over, Mm -hmm. what are we doing? And it's the same here in Mallorca. Um, Luckily, there's amazing people out there doing great things. I've got many heroes and sheroes. Yeah. Brad Robinson from Save the Med. Oh, yes, you know. Yes, yeah. Mandy Merklin, Mailing um, Colorado from Permamed and Eileen Von, sorry, I'll get her name wrong, but Eileen as well. Um, and the young Eddie and Elias and all of those from youth permaculture practitioners. Ah, you know, there's so many heroes and sheroes on this island who are doing such wonderful work. A friend, Atoki's organising some protest in Sineu in the coming weeks on this um, unsustainable practice model right. of tourism that we've got. Yes. So my challenges are nothing yeah. <laughs> compared to the challenges of maybe we're going to sink under the weight of all of these higher cars. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. could happen. Who knows? Has anybody tested it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, hopefully not. <laughs> yeah. You never know. Well. I mean, there's millions of cars on yeah, the island. No, 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 no. Um, for those that are listening in, you've been here for 32 years yep. right now. So, what, what do you do? Aha. I have the best job in the world. <laughs> um, I'm self employed, I'm a celebrant, and I'm an end of life doula. I'm a volunteer. I facilitate death cafes. I've got a death festival, which is at the end of um, October. I love to collaborate with with people. I facilitate a, a, a monthly event in Palma called Mujeres Inspiradoras, Inspiring Women, which is sort of showcasing some great women on the island. I do lots of things. 
I'll do anything yeah, <laughs> for yeah. a cup of tea and a slice of cake, <laughs> you know, a few quid. Yes, yeah, yeah. And of course, there's the death cafes. As yeah, well. yeah, yeah. I do the death cafes. I love the death cafes. The death cafes is a global movement. It's in over eighty countries in the world, which is pretty impressive. And it was started in somebody's living room in Islington, North London, in two thousand and eleven. And I am eternally grateful to John Underwood for coming up with this concept. It wasn't new to him. He'd already met a Swiss sociologist, Bernard Kretas, who had a similar model. But John just took it one step further, which was to follow the conversation, to measure the conversation, mm. which is why we know it's in over 80 countries, which is why we know it's thousands of death cafes that have taken place since 2011. And I've been facilitating, I've facilitated over a 1,000 since 2015 when wow. I brought them to Mallorca yeah. and I'm proud to be part of a network that's very strong in Spain. I'm really proud of what we've created because every time somebody has expressed an interest, oh, I wish there was a death cafe in my area, I'm like, yeah, 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 you've yeah. got one, like, you've got one, <laughs> you know, because it's not rocket science. No, no. It just takes, six. I've got the experience now, so I know yes. a good practice model and I'm happy to share. Yes. And um, the rules of a death cafe are very simple. If you want to call it death cafe, you do not charge for it. So there's no money to be made in it. Yeah. Um, offer tea and cake. Yeah. There's no agenda and there's no experts. And I always say to people, none of us are dead no. here in this gathering, are we? And everybody says, oh, no, we're not. Yeah, <laughs> we're really. all in agreement. This is so who knows more? Nobody. Yeah. So it's an equal playing ground. And I suggest that um, politicians could do with going to a death cafe or, <laughs> or three yes, because yes. there the practice of active listening is encouraged there the practice of not having an opinion or not sharing your opinion because that's all it is it's mm -hmm. your opinion mm -hmm. and also the 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 beauty I see in the death cafe which blows me away every time some people might show up who really feel they've got nowhere else to go and they mm -hmm. might be in a deep grieving. But what I've seen over the years is how the group of relative strangers just come together and mm -hmm. hold that person. Yes. Wow. Yeah. And with no words. Yes. It's yes. mind-blowing. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's the miracle of the Death Cafe. Yeah. And then you get tea and cake. <laughs> <laughs> which is always the bonus. Yeah, which is definitely the bonus. Yeah. <laughs> and it's not only the, the Death Cafe, it's because it's also the, the other celebrant work that you do oh, as well. Yes. So, oh, I love my celebrant work. Yeah, oh. yeah. I have the best job. In the summer, I get all dressed up to the nines to go along to these wonderful weddings. Because Mallorca is a very popular destination wedding. Yeah. And I get to work with just people who are in love. I mean, how much better can it be? Yeah, yeah. And then I get to tell their story. And, um, and, and, and what gives me so much pleasure is seeing people who've never been to New Yorker who are like, wow. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. it's great, isn't yeah, it? And that's yeah. why they call it the Island of Calm. Yes. Or my name is Paradise. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and the, that was going to be the next question about yeah. what you love about being here, but there's so many things. Yeah, you know. there's loads. For, I mean, simple things are, I always say, Mallorca's got one foot in the past, which will enable it to move forward. Mm -hmm. um, because if you, <laughs> I used to just laugh when it rains and I'd see people just bent over. What were they doing? They were collecting snails. Right. You yeah, know, yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's raining. All yeah. the snails are coming out. Yeah. We'll have snails for tea. Um or they're in the hedgerows because it's spring. And it's, yes. what are they doing? Oh, they're getting asparagus, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and that's the beauty of Mallorca is, is their connection to nature mm -hmm. and their understanding of the seasons and and the fact that we have two springs and they're not an autumn because the, the second spring in what we think is autumn, mm. you see everything coming to life and it's just, wow, yes. you know. Yeah. We're just going to pick something from the garden. Um, there's so much I love and admire about the the Mallorquin way of of living. Um, the, the the family community has been strong in these 32 years that I've been here. Yeah, I'm not living in cloud cuckoo land and not accepting that there are issues in Mallorca as there are in mm -hmm. any society. 
um, poverty, mm-hmm. violence, mm-hmm. domestic violence. I mean, you know, these are issues that are there, mental health issues, they're there. Yes. But Mallorca, for me, has given me um, great happiness. I've been able to grow. I've been able to appreciate being part of the community, which is still strong. Mm-hmm. And um, what can I say? I love yeah. this place. Yeah, yeah. You know. It is a very special island. And there's so many outdoor activities here as well. Yeah. I mean, as you see, yeah. we don't really get a, a long winter. No. Where there's not that bad. Yeah. And if, if I lived in the UK, I definitely have to make the effort to go out in all weathers. Yes. Because, ooh, you know, you're missing yeah. a lot. Yes. And, but, I mean, here, yeah. it's hard to go out in the summer. Yeah, well, that's, that's the one. And then they've got the food. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think back to the, we have a wine festival in Bini Salem. Oh, I know, gosh. I've been there once before. Hell on the yes. liver, honestly. But when I went there, when I went to the town in 99 to live there, I arrived in the September and I was immediately invited by the neighbours to participate in the 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 soparella fresca which is the dinner in the street which is the right. last friday so that was a lovely little festival in billy salem it was just a couple of days you know <laughs> now it's three weeks oh, wow. like when oh. it starts it starts with now it starts with goletard which is the street called goleta and i just live Right off Goleta. <laughs> I'm San Jama. Yeah. And my mum used to live in Goleta and my ex lives in Goleta. So the street, the first weekend of the month of mayhem in September is art festival. Right. So the Friday and the Saturday um, in the evenings, the artist is exhibited in a home and right. the home opens its doors. But then I live right by the little square, so there's a stage there, and my ex lives by the other little cul-de-sac, <laughs> so there's a stage there. So, party. Yeah. And then the following weekend, it's the, the great fight, and then the wine pressing competition, and all of the other things that they keep coming up with. Yeah. Yeah. And then the final weekend is the dinner on the street. Right. So we have our fideos de verma, yes. which yes. is um, yeah. it's like a mutton stew mm-hmm. and... Um, and it's just great, yes, you know. Yeah, but of course, yeah. Binny Slam being Binny Slam, it's somebody's always going, What about <laughs> we do a fest, a fair on stone? Because we're famous for stone. So that's this month, okay. it's the stone fair. Yeah. And then it's like, Well, we've got a patron saint. So that's July because it's some Jalma. Yeah. You know, and it's like every month there's something else. And it's like, Guys, just Stop thinking. <laughs> it's like some time it's food and alcohol is done. And uh, sometimes horrible music is like, no. Yeah, yeah. I forgot people people will be listening to this. Don't move to Binny Slam, it's terrible, <laughs> awful place. Yeah. But don't move to Mallorca, terrible place. There's too many people coming to Mallorca. My message, learn Spanish, mm-hmm. please. Mm-hmm. And then enjoy Mallorca. Yes. You know, because it's a whole beautiful language. Yes. I yes. speak it. Badly, my son says, but I speak it, <laughs> and it opens doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, sorry, what was your question? <laughs> yeah, no, no, that, that, that was it, really. Oh, right. uh, people were, you know, looking to come over here and, and to holiday or to holiday. Enjoy the yes, time. come holiday. And if I tell everybody now, they're all going to come in October because that's my favourite month. Right, I yeah. love October. Yes, of course, yeah. don't come in October. <laughs> come in March. Yes, yeah, um, yeah. but October's fabulous. Yeah. It's just. But then, is there any end of season now? Because it just seems that there's people here all the time. Yes. But I do love October, yes. and I'm starting to like November as well. Yeah, that's when I go away. Yeah, <laughs> but so, there is there is there is a quiet time in the winter months. There is a, a couple of months where it's a bit quieter. Yeah, in in a in a town setting, definitely. Because yeah. um, the other day I was coming back on my bicycle through the main square in Bini Salem, and a woman was coming towards me. And this is what happens when spring arrives. You start seeing people outside of their homes. <laughs> and it's like, oh, my God, you're still here? <laughs> so you've either died yeah. or you've had births. But, yes, but yes, it's, yes, yes, it's yes. hilarious because 
there is that happening yeah. and I love it because in, in winter of course we're going to be inside our homes and you won't see the neighbours and then you'll come out and find out who died who lived and, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. so yeah, 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 yeah. yeah it's great I yeah. love it yeah, yeah. So. for those who are looking to maybe come over here for a holiday I mean you talk about learning learning a bit of the language if you yeah. can um, was there any other tips you'd, you'd like to sort of share with them um don't go to Palma on a rainy day. <laughs> if you're coming on holiday and the weather is a bit dodgy, yeah, yeah. it will pass. Yeah, so stay yeah. where you are. Yeah. Do not come to Palma. Honestly, it's like yeah. to, the hotels should have notices saying, do not go to Palma. It's raining today. Don't go. Yes, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I, do you know what? I'm a bit of a weirdo because I often wonder why do people go on holiday because I'm not really a holiday goer. Sure. I'm, I'm a traveller and there's a big difference. I, I don't know if I could go on holiday. Yeah. Um, last year we went back to Jamaica because I wanted to take my sons to, to show them the land of their mother's birth and their grandmother's birth and the yeah. ancestors. And and it's, it's a challenge to, to go on holiday. <laughs> so... Um, you know, if you're going to come to Mallorca, what are you coming for? Mm. Um, think about all the issues facing us. If you want to rest, stay home. Yeah. <laughs> um, if you want to explore, oh, there's Tala yachts. Yes. We love our Tala yachts, you know. <laughs> there's, that's a whole um, beautiful industry we could work on opening up the exploring of these prehistoric yes, yeah. settlements. Yeah, I mean, so. fwa, yeah, they're amazing. So. Yeah. Um, churches, oh, don't I love churches and monasteries? There's loads of churches yes. and monasteries to visit. Um, I always say to family and friends, check out the the port places yeah. like Port Soyer, Port Poyensa. I do love those towns. Yes. If I was going on holiday, I'd want to stay there. Just the Porto Poyenza walking on the pine walk, although it's like dodging on the pine walk. Sure. But it's lovely because yes. yes. yeah. growing up, walking in summer evenings was something we did as a family. And I yeah. don't know, there's that leftover joy of yes. Yes. just yeah. walking. There's some magic there. still, yeah. isn't there? Yeah. 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 And if you come in to cycle in Mallorca, <laughs> and if you come into one of those races, really? Don't throw your rubbish on our Mallorca. Yeah. Yes, yes. There's a, there's a lot of issues. There's a lot of issues. But sure. um, issues everywhere in the yes. world. Yeah, there, you are. Know? There, are. So, there are. And we've got great people doing things yeah. about it. Yeah. So. Yeah. No, no. Cool. <laughs> Another Kiwi who's doing, um, you know, good awareness about the rubbish problem in the races. Mm -hmm. um, Penelope, 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 Pe Penny. Maver okay. from, okay. yeah, from Yes, so, yes, yes. Oh, that's yeah. good. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. No, there's yeah, some great yeah. people. There, there's lots of heroes and sheroes. So if you're coming on holiday, why not check out and make a donation mm -hmm. to, um, to all these amazing organisations who are doing so much for the community. Yes, yes. And there is a knock-on effect for visiting community. Yeah. So Save the Med, who do an amazing work, you know, yeah. The Cancer Support Group, New yes, Yorker. I mean, yes. age concern. This has a knock-on effect for other people who are visiting. Yeah. So yeah. check them out. Volunteer. Yes. If you're coming on holiday, volunteer. Yeah. Intern young people. Yeah. No, fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. I mean, your story is, is different like everyone's story is different. Yeah. And I really thank you for coming on yeah. and sharing that yeah. with everybody yeah, out I'm there. Yeah, a so. bit bossy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean stay away. If you want to get married, of course. <laughs> of course, of course. Of course. Uh, yes. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for looking in. Thank you for, for tuning in to um, the Storytellers of Mallorca. Thank you, Glynis German, for, for coming on here. And if you're getting uh, wanting to get married, hatch, batch, or hatch dispatch. match and dispatch. That's the one. Uh, match of it was the one that as well. So please be in contact. We'll put Glynis's details down below. Um, we'll call out to Shear at webdesignshear.com. And guys, please like, share. Um, subscribe and comment and that would be wonderful and I look forward to sharing the next podcast with the next wonderful person thank you very much and <laughs> thank you Gwyneth. thank you Jamie You're it's welcome. great to be here good. carry on your good work thank you